So welcome back to our third lesson of chapter four. In this lesson, we are going to create the hinges, the lock buttons and the lock handles, gaps, panels, not actually uh, like the, op the hinges lock, but uh, like a uh, lock handle or button itself, but their gaps like their uh, panels, like the gaps where they will sit on. Okay, so first of all, I uh, want to create a frame here for the vents because we don't have any frame and we need a frame to organize it. So I will just create a frame here and then I will just get a little bigger, same size of the one that we have before. And I will rename it to two vents. Okay. And then I will create blend, put it here somewhere. Press shift on my keyboard, move this one, put it here, and one here. Okay. Now this should be add, so whatever we add goes there. But actually we need subtract. But for now I will uh, put it add. Later on I will move to subtract. So I'll, uh, press add over here, and here we go. We have everything back. And now let's move all the more to this side so we can have more gap and pull this one here a little bit now let's first create uh, the hinges uh, like a gap like a you can say panel the place where they will sit so I will start with a shape and I will make a square shape scale it a little down and this much it should be something like a rounded rectangle this is not a round, rounded rectangle it, because usually if you will see hinges are basically from the top it's like a rounded rectangle okay and also uh one more thing we are creating the the, the panels can you see that like there is a little bit dig in uh place over here where they're sitting so this is what we are going to create like around the button around this or canvas this is what we are going to create so here I'm just going to add a uh, like a sort of a blur blur edge cube grayscale. Okay, and this is you can see uh, some of like uh, like a rounded uh, roundness is like showing up. So I can increase it as much I want it to be round, and then I can add a levels to it. So level, and then to remove this uh, blurriness and keeping and to keep this roundness, I have to play with these values on the top. So I'll just squeeze this in, and you can see that it is becoming uh, more solid. So I'll just push this, squeeze, and squeeze this in order to get a nice so you can see that it's a nice gap going on here now now what I'm going to do here is I will add it here okay and it is on top of everything so this is what we are going to fix later on but just for now I will keep it here because I need to create some roundness here so I'll go here and Put a just uh, let's open that. Let's put a uh, blend here. Okay, and dial here gradient, gradient axle. Uh, and I need gradient axle on both sides, so I will choose gradient axle. This one reflect it. And I will put it here on top of this and choose multiply in this blend. So you can see that this is how uh, it will be created. And this is not actually what I want because this looks a little bit odd here. So I will go back here, uh, move these around. Okay. So the 
x position the y position for both of them should be same so this one i will use 0 0.5 this one as well i will use 0 0.5 both points so they are at the same on the same level so this one i will pull it this outwards so it will get become more roundish and this one becomes more roundish as well if i go here you can see this is becoming uh, roundish but the, the problem is that because this is bigger and this is smaller so it should match so i will go here double click it here single click it here so to match i will just use these x values start pulling this inside here and this one as well right here as we want to make it roundish so once it's once it start getting round so i will stop at that point This should be 0.5. I got changed. Okay, so this I can keep at 0.64. This one I can keep at 0.32. So they all are at. Uh, not point three four negative value and something like that. Okay, and to make it more roundish, let's do some changes and then. To make it more roundish, what I will do is that I will add another blur HQ here. So just move this side here. Blur HQ, high quality. This, this is fine now this is too big okay we all know this is too big so what i need to do here is i need to just add a transform 2d okay and then i just want to go back here in the tiling mode absolute no tiling okay and reduce the size with the control shift I can double click it here so I know where I have to put it. So then, after double clicking, uh, clicking this, single click it here. So I can size of it and then put wherever I think it belongs. Now one thing you will notice here is that it is adding this gap also so what we can do instead of using add here inside this blend i will choose a different option here and let's see which is much more better we'll keep it because we are not creating a uh, so let's let's keep it here then later on once it is done then uh, uh, we can change that so i think it's still a little bigger okay go here make it smaller okay and then control i will press on my keyboard and make it smaller from the height only okay got here and now what i will do here is that i will just create another one or like another blend okay put one blend here this part and then go back here 
and add a another blend here sorry another transform node here and this transform node i will put it uh, here and i think all of them are crossing so i will press x here select both of them press x x will help you to uh, swap because we are, will be using add so add is you can say uh, like a non-commutative so it will not change anything once i'm done i will double click it here single click it here and then press shift on my keyboard and move it down and put it somewhere here maybe you want a third one or just put it here for now okay so we have two of them and then what i'm going to do is move this here put another blend put this one here and take this one use another transform 2d put this one here and then add and we'll click here select this one single click this sorry this single click this press shift and move this one up so we have one two three hinges here now one thing the hinges should uh, this is what we are creating is basically the uh the gap where they will sit so instead of using a uh, blend what i would like add i will use here subtract but once i will do that you can see there is a gap but this is too deep this gap like this gap or uh like this value is too deep so what i can do here is that i can just go back here add a level to it okay and then use this uh, height information here by pushing okay. and that will bring it up and what else i can do here is to make it solid i can push this to the other side and this one as well maybe a little bit and this one i'll keep it as it is now once we will add the hinges in these gaps then we can play with these settings again just to make sure they will uh like they look uh they they are actually uh following the gap itself like they, they are not bigger or smaller But for now i will keep it as, as it is so these can be changed later on too so i will select all of these and right click add frame make this bigger and i will call this hinges gap or hinges panel or whatever you seem is the right word for it okay now let's do with this like these buttons and i uh, will do the same thing with these buttons here now when we will start creating our hinges what we are going to do is that we will take the same values from here and then we'll copy that and and put it in the other other part so we don't have to create the hinges again so that's a uh, like one good thing uh with this okay so i will make a blend put this all here put this here this one i will connect it back here and this one i'll put the add value here so we can have everything back now shape And this time I will use disk and smaller disk. And here, what I will do is that first of all, I will take a transform to D, make it smaller, okay, um, and then tiling mode. I will turn it to no absolute, then no tiling. 
move this up here. Make it more smaller. More smaller. Okay. And then add a mirror to it. Mirror gate scale value and mirror to the Y. It will create one at the bottom. And now I need to do one thing here. I want to make this more smaller. Okay. Or up and add another uh like you know uh this disk here so what i will do is i have this disk already so i will add a blend here put this one top take this one use a transform put this in the background change this one to add then double click it here single click it here and make sure this dialing mode for this shape is absolute and no tiling. Now, get it up, down, and then put this one in the middle. So I have these three buttons created already here. What I'm going to do here now is to add it here. Okay, but you can see that they're not on the right spot. So I have to create to give it a transform 2d and this well i will double click it here single click it here make this smaller see where it seems like uh too suitable here i think this much good A little more, more smaller. Okay, now this should go uh, inwards, like it should, uh, it, sh it should not be uh, like extruded outwards. Like there should be a negative extrude here. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, before doing the subtraction, because we have to choose subtract. Before doing that, I will go here. Add some blur so that we will remove all these kind of artifacts that we are getting here. So I will just go in between blur, uh, HQ grayscale. Okay, use the quality and just here. Point five, I think, is fine. And then I will go back in the blending mode. Double click it here to subtract, and they are now down here. But as you can see, they are here down, but they need to be uh, like they are kind of a basically what do you say? Uh, it's like too deep, so I will just go between here levels, whatever I did for the uh hinges gaps, I will put the levels here and reduce this uh, like white amount here so it, they will start coming up so i think this much is because later on you know we are going to create a uh, like buttons on it so it will be automatically hidden here so same thing i click it here add frame and then I will make this a little bigger here. A little hard to get arrows. Okay. And I will call it buttons. Okay. Now, why we are creating gaps first and then the hinges and the buttons and the lock holder? The reason is that because consider this as, a, as our first layer second layer third layer fourth layer fifth layer and then on top of it i will create edge wear so if i will create the buttons so that those buttons those hinges those uh like that lock holder will be also affected with the edge wear and then i have to mask it out by creating a mask and those kind of things to avoid that i will just go with the layers uh like you can say uh, order 
like uh, with the nodes order and then i will add the edgeware so there will be no issues in the uh, in, like later on we do have to create a mask but uh, like that's a like uh, second next like a second step now we are done with the these buttons gap so we will now create this log holder here so that's that will be simple so i will just go to blend shift move it here everything then put it here use add value so i will get everything here make sure that you're keep on saving otherwise you can lose your work and also if you think there are a lot of options here you can do the same thing what we did here uh to create a external graph and then bring it here so you will not have a lot of spaces like like you will not have uh, a lot of nodes you will save the spaces so here i will go the spacebar shape okay and this time i will choose square okay a little bit i'll scale it with a height a little bit smaller than this and this have to be more roundish so blur hq grayscale so quality of high a little bit more higher okay. and then to solidify it i would use levels and then i would just start start solidifying that's enough and then i will choose my transform 2d here let's remove these gaps between each of the nodes make sure the tiling mode go to absolute and no tiling mode here and then you can just plug it in okay and then take this double click it here then single click it here on the transform then use uh, like scale it down whatever you think it suits it have to be smaller than the height of the button a little hard to get this because the mark this transform tool is more like if i double click it here you can see it clearly here but if i double click it here so it's kind of a little bit uh not that visible because of the color uh the colors hope this problem can be solved in the future releases a little hard to take that uh, gap okay let's have a good we can at least see what's going on and then i can put it here okay A little bit bigger. Okay, now I will go here and before and then uh subtract it. You can see this is too sharp, just like what we did with the uh the uh, like the buttons and the hinges, we will just use the blur HQ here just to make the edges a little bit uh, softer. I'll select all these quality up high reduce the intensity a little bit not a little bit a lot i mean like points five something like that okay good so we all have our gaps here gaps that we were looking for so now what we are going to do right click it here add a frame and then name it to lock holder okay go to buttons gap <laughs> grammatical error okay So I hope uh, you have learned something from this lesson. We have created all our three gaps, hinges gap, buttons gap, lock 
folder gap next lesson we will uh, add some scratches over it because we want to make it look like it's, it's an old uh, like a locker and to add those kind of effect we will add some scratches here so thanks a lot to everyone uh, for joining this lesson I'm really thankful to you all for supporting me and I hope to receive your uh, support continuously I have noticed that many of you are watching my videos but have not subscribed to my channel yet so please subscribe to my channel and also click the bell icon so you can receive all the notifications about the great new contents uh, which I will be uploading soon so if you like my video so please hit the like button and if you have any queries or uh, any question just leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them as soon as possible I'll try my best to do that and one request I have and that is I have noticed that some of the viewers do not watch uh, watch my videos online and instead they download them so please if anyone is doing that and if you find someone doing that then please uh, ask them to stop this because this will never help me to get my hard work paid off and it will demotivate me so I don't want to stop making tutorials for you all therefore help me to get new subscriber I will take off now and take care everyone take care guys till we meet in the next lesson stay safe stay healthy and keep learning on Z Interactive your own training institute there's one important announcement I would like to make I have started three great membership plans on my channel I have introduced ZDI friends membership plan which will give you exciting perks like loyalty badges and priority on comments. I have also introduced ZDI Early Bird Plan, which will give access to Z Interactive tutorials way early before they become public. So you will get all these lessons at once and you can binge watch them. Last but not the least, I have introduced ZDI Premium Plan, which will give access to advanced professional tutorials, which you will find it very, very expensive outside. And I will be giving this and a very low amount of price. So visit my channel now and click on the join membership to get more information. I hope you become one of my members. If you want to learn how to create a highly detailed prop procedurally using Substance Designer, so this premium tutorial series is for you. Join my premium membership plan on YouTube and get access to all premium tutorials. In this tutorial series, I will demonstrate how to use Substance Designer along with simple geometry to create a realistic, smashed up retro television.